All right, good morning. Oh, good morning. I want to welcome everybody here this morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're going to begin with an opening prayer by Ethan in just a moment, and then we'll get started. Ethan? Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day, this beautiful day to your blessing. Allow us to come together, Lord, to study your word, Lord. May the children of the minds of what it is, every person. Apply it to our lives. May the children of those who are not able to take it this morning, we pray that you give back to the day before it is possible. Amen. 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 So this is our final class on uh, parting words of the wise, uh, looking at the Old Testament. Um, you'll have the New Testament class when things um, change over. So our goal here was to look at the lives of these Bible characters and put uh, more attention into the last things they said after a, a long life. Um, as a quick reminder, I want to go through the characters um, fairly quickly. And we're going to look at them as they appeared chronologically in the Bible and not, not as, we, as, we, as we went through them in class. So, <clears throat> we looked at Jacob. Uh, Zach covered Jacob, and Jacob's final words, uh, they rest in um, Genesis 48 and 49. Um, if you remember there, that, that's where we see that Jacob blesses Joseph's sons. Um, it is listed, um, it's listed out that the final words he, it, he had there for his 12 sons, most of it was prophetic. Um, some of the more important words were that God was going to come back to them and, and take them home. Then he listed out some warnings to his sons and, and praises and the things um, they would do through the... the through their lineage would be accomplished, things that they would do. Um, when he died, his sons and a great host of people took him home um, to bury him. And Zach highlighted the point that Jacob was not a perfect man and, and God had a great deal of patience with Jacob and he gave him time to be a better person. <coughs> was there anything that anyone wanted to add to Jacob's lesson or any particular application you took from Jacob that you wanted to share? Okay. Um, and then I covered Joseph. Joseph's final words are at the closing verses of Genesis in Genesis chapter 50. Jo Joseph repeated um, to, his, to his brothers and to his descendants what Jacob had said that God would visit them again. And he added, if you would, oh, and that God would visit them again and take them home. Um, he did not get a big burial parade like Jacob did to take him home, but rather he was really faithful to the promise that God would return the people home. That um, he said, he, he made the generations below him promise to take his bones home. Um, that was a that was shown in Hebrews as a great act of faith. Um, the, his descendants did so. Moses made sure that the, the bones left e Egypt. Joshua, we didn't talk about it when we got to Joshua, but Joshua and the men with him, um, they laid the bones to rest at the end of, book of, jo of the book of Joshua. So that was, that was completed. Um, and I wanted to emphasize, looking at the life, life of Joseph, we saw... A man determined to follow and serve God in all circumstances and trials, and his faith for God, his faith in God, remained until fast until death. Um, was there any application or, or thought that anyone wanted to add about Joseph? Anything you took away from the lesson you wanted to share? All right. So then from Joseph, um, we had Moses, Zach covered Moses. Moses' final words were in 32 and 33 of Deuteronomy. There he reminds Israel of the law, tells them how to observe it, and pass it down to their children to prolong their days in the promised land. He passes uh, the spirit 
in him to Joshua, and he dies on Mount Nebo, of course not being allowed to go into the promised land because of his sin of striking the rock in front of the people instead of speaking to it like he was supposed to. Um, Zach brought out that God believed in Moses even before Moses did. And God was patient with Moses. Was there any thoughts or application or comments anyone wanted to add about Moses? Anything you took from it? All right. <coughs> Can't get rid of this cough. Excuse me. Moving on to Joshua. Uh, I covered Joshua. His, and his final words were in Joshua 24. The words we focused on are, are, were, Choose who you will serve. Joshua there tells the people to follow the law. He tells them to put away their false gods. He warns them of God's wrath if they did not obey God. The life of Joshua was a life full of choosing to serve God when many or most around him were not, and or at best were weak-hearted in their service. And Joshua led the people through the land, uh, conquering, conquering an enemy after enemy, and the Lord was with them. And we saw that in Joshua's life. Um, anyone have a thought or a takeaway from Joshua that you wanted to share before we move on? Um, then when we continued, I covered Samuel. And his, Samuel's final words were in chapter 12 um, of 1 Samuel and, and, and in chapter 16. Um, remember, Samuel's parting words were not dying words, but really parting words from service. Um, service as leader of the people. Uh, Samuel was uh, given in service to God as a small boy. He worked for God till death. Uh, he led the people as a prophet, a priest, and a judge, and was replaced by ruling head, as ruling head by King Saul. In his farewell address, he warns the people that what would happen to them and their king if they did not follow God. He tells them to serve God and consider all the great things God has done for them. He also said he would not, God would not forsake them if they were faithful. And Samuel spoke out for God all of his life. Um, any thoughts that I wanted to add on Samuel? And then finally, Zach also covered David. David's final words were in uh, 1 Kings 2. Uh, he, tells, uh, he tells Solomon there to walk in God's ways, keep his commandments, and adds... If you do this, a king will continue on the throne. Something, um, by this time, we've, we, by, by the time we get to David, we've seen that quite a few times by now. Zach also added that David was willing to receive instruction and to hear counsel. And he offered, he, and he was offended when God was put down and he had a heart for God, which is why God had Samuel anoint him king. Anyone have a thought they want to add to the discussion of David? We're moving on. Okay. So in all of these parting words, what common, uh, what common things did we see when they were telling the people? Yes, sir. Um. Hearing God. Absolutely. Absolutely. He was pointing out how um, all of them pointed out were to do what God said. Um, I called that I think it was work and obedience, right? To serve God. And he was saying it certainly applies to us today. What other common things did we see in these parting words? Absolutely. She was pointing out that um, these words, they, 
they were these were those same words they were saying all along to uh, to the to the people, especially thinking about Moses and Joshua. Absolutely, and Jacob. I mean, he spent his life telling. I assume he spent his life telling his sons God was coming back. Yeah, absolutely. What other common things did we see? Yes, sir. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, all these men chose to serve God, and that means working on it. Yes, sir. Nate? With regard to Jacob. Absolutely. So, <coughs> um, they overcame, is what I guess you're saying. Well, all these men overcame. Yeah. Oh, Some yeah. Of them we have more record failure than others. Yeah. Uh, don't have much regard to Joseph. Joseph. And Absolutely. Um, what other things, what other common things did we see? Um, something I think that um, Kathy was getting at is there was, there was a lot of warning in these things, right? They spent their life warning. Um... If you don't follow God, these things will happen. And th so we saw work and obedience. We saw warning. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And, and, you know, we saw David teaching Solomon. That was, he was talking to Solomon in the end. She was saying that um, sometimes directly and indirectly, they were always saying, teach the next generation so that they can, con they can continue in, in the work. Yes, sir. Very, very good point. He was saying it was also something we don't see is a lot of fear. These men were trusting in God, um, especially by the end. But they're, they're not in fear of, of death. I think another thing we saw a lot was salvation, right? It's the idea that if you follow God, um, He will be with you. And in their terms, it was pretty physical, as in... Um, they weren't over. They weren't overrun by an enemy, but I, I think the the salvation was something that they all talked about too. So we already said it though. But were these men perfect men, and did they always do the right thing? No, we read of the sins of all of them except for Joseph, um, which I'm sure he did, but it, it wasn't brought out. And Samuel, it was the only sin we saw of Samuel was just in. And how his more is the sins of his sons, um, kind of a, a repeating of what happened with Eli, but they weren't quite as bad as Eli's sons, I don't think. Um, but no, these were not perfect men. And of course, you know, when when I ask myself that question about them being perfect men, is we are they're being held up here. Now, of course, I think about Jesus, right? Now, I'd like to do some comparison now. Think back to the final words of Jesus. What were the final words of Jesus? Did, did the words, it is finished, just pop into your head? Were the words, it is finished, the final words of Jesus? The parting words of Jesus? 
Praise God, no, they were not. Because Jesus arose, right? Those were the words Jesus said before he died, but those were not Jesus' parting words. So what were the parting words of Jesus? Yeah, there's one of them. He would be, it was, uh, he would be back. Go and teach. Yes, absolutely. It was where we have the Great Commission. <coughs> and something else I want to think about is those words on the cross. Oh, a, lot of, a lot of these guys, you know, they were dying. And so they said the things that their descendants or their followers needed to know to carry on faithfully. But remember when Jesus was dying on the cross... I mean, he did give a, a little bit of instruction to, you know, have his mother taken care of. But did he shout out things like, avenge me, or honor me? Or, or tell, his, uh, tell his disciples, you know, do these things. For, for, he didn't say those things on the cross, right? He didn't have to, because he was coming back. And that's when he was giving his parting words. He, he already said a lot of that during his life. But he knew he was coming back. So he didn't need to say those things when he died. So his actual uh, parting words are in, in the Gospels, in Matt, Matthew 28, as Diana pointed out, Mark 16, uh, Luke 24, and then in um, John just kind of runs right into Acts, in, in, in Acts 1. And these things, as we point out, most of them are the, are the Great Commission. I want to look at Mark 16. Mark 16 and... Uh, in verse 14 there. Or 15. In Mark 16 and 15 it said, And he said, Go into all the world and will preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, and they will speak in new tongues, and they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Obviously, all, not all of that can, can continues, carries on to us, but the beginning there certainly does. So, Jesus' final words here. How do the words of Jesus compare to the words of, those, of the wise men that we were just talking about? How do those compare? What does Jesus say that they also said? <coughs> Teach, that was one of the things. Yep. How, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So he was saying that he's prepping for future generations to come down the road, just as all these men were. I mean, it, Jesus is Jesus had words of warning. Jesus had words of obedience and work. We were pointing out. Jesus had words of salvation, just as all of all of the, as they had in, in different ways. Um, did Jesus wait till the end of his life to share all these things? Absolutely not. It was his entire life was teaching these things. And as we already pointed out, these men did not wait till the end of their lives to share the wisdom. Most of them served from their youth. And, or at least a long time before their death. Um, but it was, it was their faith. But was it, was it their faith? Sorry, this sentence doesn't make sense. One second. But it was... Right, but 
It was their faith and, and what they did because of their faith that they were remembered. And by their faith they overcame. Look at Hebrews 11 with me. Hebrews 11. Um, we'll start with Jacob there in verse 21 of Hebrews 11. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith Joseph when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instruction concerning, the bone, concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden there three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they, were, and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ um, approach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he would lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith he passed to the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say for the time would fail me to tell you of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, Stop the mouth, mouth of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to fight armies of aliens. So how do we know that these six men were faithful men? How do we know that they were faithful men? The text just said so. Okay, yeah. But how else do we know that they were faithful men? Their deeds, their actions. Absolutely. By their actions, they did not, they don't necessarily need others to say how faithful they are, but their recorded actions, because the recorded actions do show their faith. Um, did every action show God in their lives? No, they were sinful, as, as we already pointed out, and it cost them. But I would like to make some application here. Looking at the class as a whole, what are the, some of the practical things we can take looking at the lives and actions of these men? What are the applications you have found as we went through it? Absolutely. 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 So she was pointing out how, as, as we had said, you know, they made their mistakes, but God forgave them every time they repented and turned back to him. And that's what they told the people every time. And they warned them all their lives. This is what they will, at least Moses and Joshua and Samuel. But, um, absolutely. And that's something we can, uh, certainly applies to us now. What other applications did we find? Yes, ma'am. Stronger. I think. No. Not like. No. God. 
Absolutely. She was saying that um, none of them started out with the faith that they had in the end. They didn't start out with that kind of faith in the beginning. And as we grow, and our, our, our faith grows, and, you know, there's also something said there of Samuel when his, when his role changed. He accepted it and, and, and took on the, the new things on, on the new role. And his faith was, cert- was certainly stronger. You can see his faith growing throughout his life. Um, what other applications did you find? Yes, sir, Stan. Absolutely. He said they learned to be more reliant on God. And they, they realized they couldn't accomplish certain things without him. Certainly did. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So, um, or to, he was adding on to Kathy's point. <coughs> Nate, I have the hardest time repeating what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. No, I, it's a great comment, though. I appreciate it. Um, but luckily, the mic picks you up, so I know everybody on Facebook heard you. <laughs> so, um, there was, I had a thought in the middle of that comment, Nate. It was a great tie-in, you think. About what you said for a second. Yes, absolutely. So um, we talked about how we, you talked about how we were they influenced generations, uh, great grandchildren and great grandchildren, and we saw that uh, Joseph. You know, his um, he saw the children of Manasseh in, in Ephraim. They they were raised on his knee. It said, and then. That did continue for some generations, and then remember we get to we get to Moses, and there became there was a Pharaoh who did not remember Joseph or or the, well the greatness the, the the great things Joseph had done for Egypt, and so that's when they the, the, their influence uh, it held for generations, but it eventually it waned as the generations didn't carry it on. Remember in in the beginning of the book of Judges we didn't read it, but in the beginning of the book of Judges um, when the elders who were under Joshua passed away, it was then that the people turned away and that the judges would need to be put in place. So absolutely, their influence, uh, they, they influenced and they brought glory to God. Um, and it did last for generations um, beyond them. And then the next one, you know, s- stepped in and, and took over. Once, once, that, that, uh, once that influence had waned. Um, other thoughts, other applications you might have seen. Yes, ma'am.
Absolutely. He was saying that um, a, quite a few of these men, ex, you know, um, uh, ex, expressed doubt, not knowing if they could do the things that God was assigning them. And we can have the same issues. Remember, Moses said, "I can't, I can't speak, and I can't do this." Well, here's Aaron, and here's these signs. Do these things, and, and Moses, Moses succeeded. You know, Samuel had that small bit of doubt where he said, I, I, can't, go anoint, I can't go over here and anoint David because Saul's going to see me. Um, God made a way for Samuel. Um, but absolutely, God helps us and, and makes a way for us in, in our duty. Yes, Sam. Josh. Mm-hmm. That's excellent. He was he brought up Proverbs thirteen twenty two and how um uh talk about leaving an inheritance. And a lot of these men they did leave a great inheritance to their followers. And something we can think about is we, we are often left with a great inheritance from our from our fa- our fathers and our, our family and especially by Jesus and thinking about do we squander that do we squander what's been given to us or do we use it wisely? Very good, Josh. Thank you. Yes, Stan. We've left them nothing. Absolutely. He was talking about passing on a spiritual inheritance, just building off of Joshua's, Josh's point. And, and leaving, a, uh, even if we left them millions of dollars, really, we've left them nothing if we haven't left a spiritual inheritance for them. Any other comments that we wanted to add in? Yes, ma'am, Irene? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So she was saying that um, these men were reclining at table with Jesus, and Jesus, you know, tells them to, to get to work, and I mean, they were kind of waiting for him, and he was like, "Go and, and do." And he rebuked him, uh, rebuked him a bit, just like Joshua did. You absolutely, Joshua did the same thing, rebuked, um, uh, rebuked his family and the people around him too. So you will serve. Um, I, I thought of be doers of the word in James twenty one. Uh, I mean James twenty. <laughs> excuse me, James one verse twenty one. Uh, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow, overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself. 
where he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. So be doers. That was something that came out quite a bit. Be doers of the word, workers. And tell others of God. Fight the good fight, as First Timothy says. Um, any other applications I wanted to point out? You know, in, in thinking about this comparison to Jesus, I, we saw many qualities and actions like Jesus, I think, in these men, right? And like Jesus, and Jacob was the head of a family that grows and flourishes, right? And just like Christ right now is the head of the church. And we'll read that in Colossians 1. Um... Like Jesus, Joseph preserved life, right? Remember Joseph, and God set him to the task. Um, what God gave him um, the knowledge of, of, the, uh, of the famine that was to come, and Pharaoh put Joseph to work in, in, saving, in, in, prepar in preparing and saving the, the grain and the food that, that saved the world at the time. Like Jesus, died on the cross, um, to give us eternal life, and he, he will stand by the Father interceding for us. That's in uh, Romans 8. I actually want to read that one. Romans 8 and 31. What then shall we say of these things? For God is for us. Who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for all of us, how uh, shall we not with him also freely give all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, for he even at, for, who is even at the right hand of God, who is also making intercession for us. You know, like Jesus, we saw Moses leading, leading the people home. You know, Christ, like Christ gives us a path to heaven through the cross. We see that in John fourteen six. You know, Jesus said there, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, like Jesus, Joshua fought for his people, right? He corrected those around him, and he reminded them of God's law. Um, like Jesus... Uh, Jesus is helping us in our spiritual battles now. I also think, in, um, here's an example, also in Colossians 1, I think more in 15 and 16 in there. Um, like, like Jesus, Samuel said, God is your king. Don't serve the wrong king. Remember he was, he was when they asked for Saul, when they, they cried for a king, Samuel, we, we think Samuel had the right to be offended because he was the leader at the time and God said, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. There's, God was their king and they asked for another one. Samuel told him not to serve the wrong king. You know, Jesus told us we can't have two masters in, in, in Matthew, 20, in Matthew 6, 24. You, know, you can't serve both God and mammon. And, and then, like Jesus, David, David had a heart for God. David uh, stood up for God, just like Jesus does on many occasions. Jesus had a heart for God, which, I mean, you know, remember in the garden, Jesus prayed, let this cup pass from me. But in the end, he said, let thy will be done. You know, he prayed to God. We see Jesus praying to God constantly, going out on his own and, and praying to God, just as David was quite the man of prayer. Um, so this study was supposed to make us aware of our time uh, by looking at more by aware more aware of what, looking at our our time and what we do with our time by looking at examples of the past. Um, these men, as we pointed out, they did and we discussed. We did not wait to serve God till the end of their life. They took, um, if not all of their life a large portion of their life to remind others to serve God. And some did take longers, 
But God had patience with them. God had forgiveness to them. But they were all active men of faith through, the, through their life. And they did not wait for the end to work and tell others of God. Any further comments? They all love God, absolutely. And that's why they serve Him. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I found myself... Um, oh, in the, there in John when... Um, Peter, do you love me? I thought about that a lot. And, and they all lived into their old age. I mean, none of these men died young. You were talking about the... He was mentioning how, for older generations, how the, the influence they had in, in finishing strong in life. And um, their influence carries on to us today, which is why we're reading it. Absolutely. Any other comments? And I, I forgot to repeat it, but he was pointing out how these men did it because of their love for God and, and the hearts they had for God. Well, that was the end of our class. Uh, I think Keith and... Who's teaching back there? Keith and... Philip. Yes. They're fin- they'll finish up back there and then they'll be out here starting... I don't know if it's Wednesday night. No, singing. No, we don't have singing. The meeting. That's right. So it'll be, I guess, in, no, meeting next Sunday too. So we're like two weeks away. Anyway, thank you everybody for your comments and, and, and uh, attention today.